Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India If you look at this picture which I did in the last lecture uh, based on our uh, you know, concept of static stability we said that uh, uh, all points on this side of the drag curve are unstable uh, <coughs> equilibrium states you know, if we just go by you know, balancing thrust equal to drag not really caring about the other uh, degrees of freedom in this motion and uh, on the other side what we found was that all the equilibrium states are stable right and this we can obtain you know, all the states we can obtain by changing the thrust available. Now in reality you know, it is not true that uh, Know, all the states are unstable on this side of the curve. The reason is that uh, uh, when we are talking about static stability, we are actually talking about only the system's tendency to come back to its equilibrium state and not really seeing if it has really come back to its equilibrium state or not. So there is another notion of stability which is which is related to no, which is dynamic stability is related to the actual time history of uh, systems state right. So what uh, uh, we do in this case uh, we look at the response uh, and uh, we look at uh, the response at time t going to infinity and see if the system has really come back to its original equilibrium state or not. So here x equal to 0 is the equilibrium state and because of the external disturbances or perturbation this is the response in x from this equilibrium condition and we look at the time history. So if you know, the transients have died down you know, and the system has achieved this state again x equal to 0 then we say that the system is or our airplane is dynamically stable at an equilibrium state when eventually
So it clearly it looks like that uh, no, the system no, oh, for which I have written this state x and plotted it against time. So it clearly looks like the system is having a tendency to go back to its equilibrium condition. So what is telling me is that system is statically stable at this equilibrium condition no? and uh, since the transients have also died out no? in time and the uh, system is able to come back to this 0 no, equilibrium state it is also dynamically stable right? from this definition. So here statically stable does mean no, dynamically stable equilibrium condition. What uh, actually you need to do no, when you want to look at the dynamic stability you need to no, find the solutions of systems equations of motion when it is disturbed from the equilibrium condition. So let us look at a, a, a simple example again the example of this pendulum. So we already wrote equation of motion for this pendulum. So physically we already see that uh, the system is you know, statically stable at this equilibrium position and we want to see that uh, <coughs> mathematically also you know, if it is so static uh, this position is statically stable you know, that is what we said. Now we want to do the same, same analysis through this equation of motion. Now clearly we are talking about we are talking about uh, the stability we are talking about small motion around this equilibrium state. So we are actually talking about theta which is small remember theta is a change in state small change in state of the uh, pendulum uh, because of a small disturbance. So this you know, uh, this uh, when we try to associate this with stability. So theta is small sin theta there is a nonlinear equation of motion which is not really easy to solve. So we want to uh, look at simpler ways of looking at stability no, without looking at the actual time response for this equation. So sin theta is theta and when theta is small we can make this approximation. and the equation simplifies to this linear equation and this simplification has been done around theta equal to 0 equilibrium state. Now solution for this we know now we can write the solution for this equation in terms of parameters omega is the natural frequency 
and a and b depend upon the initial conditions. Okay. So, if we have an initial condition which looks like theta at time t equal to 0 is 0 and okay the velocity is non zero then you can also write this theta t as for less do one more step when theta is zero theta uh, at time t equal to zero is zero what we get from here from this solution is a into 0 plus b into 1 and that gives us b equal to 0. So, we have solution for this initial condition as theta of t is equal to a sin omega t where a is given by this initial condition and what we get is so clearly depending upon the 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 impulse that you will give to this mass uh, to to make it move away from this equilibrium condition. Uh, will result in the uh, amplitude of the motion. So if I want to plot this response, it's going to look. going to look like this. Now the question is how do we infer uh, about the stability from here clearly this clearly the system is you know, this mass m is you know, statically stable about this equilibrium position which is theta equal to 0 right Stat statically stable because you know, it is coming It has a tendency to come back to this equilibrium state, so it's statically stable. Is it dynamic, dynamically stable? This equilibrium uh, condition? No. Okay. So this equilibrium condition for this pendulum. Uh, is theta equal to zero equilibrium condition for this pendulum is not dynamically stable because a dynamically stable 
response will look something like this you know, the transients decaying in time so that system has finally reached this you know, position of equilibrium in time you know, when t goes to infinity mathematically. So it is not dynamically stable but statically stable. So what do you get uh, from and uh, stability actually have to be with respect to the dynamics. So what you can infer from here is statically stable does not always imply statically stable does not always imply that the system is also dynamically stable. So this is clear from this uh, exercise while the other way around is true when a system is dynamically stable it is also statically stable but this this is also useful huh? because the problem is when you want to look at the dynamically stable uh, or dynamic stability of uh, of an equilibrium state of the system or the airplane <coughs> what you need to do is you need to incorporate all the parameters you know, use all the equations and solve all the equations together to find the solutions with respect to time and then look at the time history and see if the tangents are you know, decaying in time or not. So clearly uh, uh, clearly there is an advantage you know, of of uh, using static stability criteria there we just have to look at how the restoring forces are behaving with respect to the change in state of the system and uh, we can from there infer about uh, we get we can get some information about the stability of the system but in this case no, we have to uh, look at the equations of motion no, which is more difficult and if you if you want to talk about aircraft no, uh, an aircraft designer uh, will usually no, uh, no, will have a lot of uh, difficulty generating all the data possible no, at the preliminary design itself stage itself no, so that he can carry out the dynamic uh, stability analysis. So what uh, he would rather prefer no, is to look at uh, uh, to start with no, once he has come down to some design uh, meeting the mission requirements or the performance requirements then what he would be interested in knowing about stability is you know, some information it's not the complete information because it may not be possible to do that because uh, aircraft uh, is is a is having six degree of freedom you know, three uh, in translation and three in rotation and uh, it has lot many parameters you know, which is you not know, difficult to generate at that uh, preliminary stage so they are established criteria you know, to be followed by aircraft designers. So what they would start with is looking at static 
stability first they would want to get first hand information about if the aircraft really has the tendency to restore itself to the equilibrium state or not and then based on that he can go on building the aircraft he can include many more design parameters in the aircraft model and finally come to a stage where the aircraft model or the mathematical model the ordinary differential equations is complete and then he can go on doing the dynamic stability analysis. So and dynamic stability is also related to statically static stability no, is only in some cases which are critical cases otherwise it is possible to infer something about dynamic stability by looking at static stability. So there are different stability criteria that an aircraft designer would start with and they are related to different flight conditions. So there is one so this is basically the stability criteria static stability criteria which are basically guidelines for aircraft designers are based on is is actually rotational motion about the CG in different planes. So first of that is longitudinal of static stability and this is related to this derivative so what so m here is the pitching moment so what this means is whenever there is a change in angle of attack because of no gust gust can change the angle of attack and there is a change in angle of attack in the positive direction what is happening to this pitching moment no to ensure static stability so it is not difficult to see that whenever there is a positive change in angle of attack which is also associated with the pitching up motion of the aircraft if this pitching moment no should be automatically generated not that we are looking at the control side we are not looking at controls stability is is the inherent property of the aircraft so as soon as there is a disturbance and that is that disturbance is creating a pitching up moment pitching up motion of the aircraft no so delta alpha is changing in the positive direction no if whether the aircraft is able to no so aircraft is pitching up when there is a positive change in angle of attack so aircraft is pitching up whether the aircraft will naturally try to generate a pitching moment in the direction to decrease the delta alpha or not that is related to the static stability of the aircraft in this case okay longitudinal static stability so for static longitudinal static stability or the pitch stability and this is control fixed so stick is control stick is fixed in this case so we'll let on look at what happens when the pilot leaves the stick free at the trim point but here 
let us first begin with looking at uh, the control fixed or stick fixed condition at the trim uh, point. So this delta alpha that is uh, due to external disturbances causing a pitching of motion will have to be counteracted by the aircraft. So, aircraft has to you know, kill this change in positive delta alpha because of the which is coming because of the external disturbances. So, it has to automatically generate a pitching moment in the other direction so that this delta alpha is killed. So, what you see here for so this this will be a statically stable condition. So, aircraft will have automatic tendency natural tendency to generate a restoring moment which will try to kill this delta alpha and that is when we will say that aircraft is having static stability properties. So, this writing it in mathematical terms this derivative must be less than 0 for static stability pitch m is the pitching moment. So, m is q into s into c bar into c m, c m is the pitching moment coefficient. Now, these three quantities remaining constant you can also write this derivative as dcm over d alpha and sometimes it is also written as cm alpha should be less than 0 for pitch stability. Many times you will also see uh, cm alpha as dcm over d alpha or the stability criteria also written in terms of dcm over dcl and this clearly comes from here. So, you can write dcm over d alpha as this is positive so dcm over d alpha less than 0 automatically also implies okay so let's look at uh, this graphically okay let's plot cm versus cl so remember all the moments are about the center of gravity of the airplane so clearly if uh, we want our aircraft or airplane to possess stability in pitch we should have a cm versus alpha curve which looks 
like this. So, this is a stable stable case. So, an aircraft having C m alpha curve which is having a negative slope is possessing stability static stability in pitch. The aircraft no, having DCM over D alpha equal to 0 is a neutrally stable aircraft and this aircraft 3 is having a positive C m alpha slope and therefore, we say that it is statically unstable airplane. The other thing that uh, also the aircraft designer has to keep in mind is not only about satisfying this just this criteria uh, you can satisfy this criteria now even when, when you have this cm versus alpha profile like this so here clearly you have cm alpha less than 0 uh, but what is happening in this case is this curve is cutting the alpha axis at negative angle of attack right so this if the aircraft is possessing no stability but is having a slope like this what is resulting in is the cm not which is the cm at alpha equal to 0 which is negative CM not negative automatically means so CM not negative and CM alpha less than zero. So both of them negative uh, means that the aircraft is statically stable in pitch, but it can trim only at negative angle of attack. Okay. So CM less than zero and CM alpha less than zero is telling me that the aircraft oh, possessing this these two characteristics oh, craft is statically stable in pitch but can trim now trim condition is defined by this equation we are looking at the, the moment equation then we have to satisfy cm equal to 0 cm cg equal to 0 for the trim condition. So here is where the cm becomes 0 and that is giving me alpha which is negative right. So, the aircraft is possessing these two you know, characteristics is statically stable in pitch, but can trim only at negative Now clearly we do not want to trim our aircraft at negative angle of attack because that is very unrealistic no? because uh, if you look at the, the, the lift versus angle of attack curve with angle of attack lift increases and that is what we want to 
maximize so we would never want to actually fly negative angles of attack okay so two things that uh, that uh, an aircraft designer will keep in mind uh, as far as the pitch uh, this cm alpha curve is concerned one thing is the aircraft must have cm not which is positive and cm alpha which is negative so this is to trim at positive angles of attack and cm alpha less than 0 to have static stability and pitch okay so we in the in the coming lectures what we'll see is how different components of aircraft are contributing to cm not and to cm alpha this is what will uh, look at in the next uh, few lectures but before that let me just complete this so this is the criteria in for stability in pitch their criteria for stability in roll and that criteria is this so change in rolling moment coefficient with respect to change in side slip angle must be negative this is also known as so we are going to see this again so this cl is coming from the rolling moment So this is another uh, um, static stability criteria that uh, the aircraft designer will have in mind. And the third one is, so you can see that clearly uh, uh, we are talking about the stability with respect to the angles alpha and beta, and that those are the angles which are defining the orientation of the wind with respect to the aircraft so we are looking at uh, disturbances in, disturbances in alpha and beta how they are going to you know, change the moment characteristics the third one is the stability of motion no, in yaw and criteria for this is oh, 
del C n over del beta should have a positive sign. So this uh, derivative is also written as C L beta. So C n here is the yawing moment. So as far as the static stability part is concerned we are going to look at uh, these three derivatives and uh, uh, what are the contribution of each of the aircraft, aircraft components, uh, components uh, mounted on aircraft either mounted on aircraft or constituting the aircraft how they are contributing to each of these terms cm alpha cl beta and sin beta right this is what we are going to see in the following classes